Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan, and today we're going to continue on with episode 4 of our series of the Tall Swarm on the highest difficulty settings in-game. This is what we're playing on, Grand Emerald, no scaling, all advanced AI starts, so let's resume with our save, shall we? Alrighty, we are back to our empire, and now we're left with the task of further fortifying our borders and developing our economy. Nothing much is expected to happen in the first 50 years, uh, we'll just continue expanding our economy and uh, getting more tech production up and running. At this point, we are uh, equivalent to most empires in terms of technology, some are inferior, uh, but that is not the case for most empires, and that is because of the difficulty settings. Uh, normally, if you had 700 plus research at year 2250, uh, you will be mostly superior or overwhelming to other empires. However, this is not the case for our empire, and we'll have to wait a solid 50 years before that could be the case. And so, without further ado, Let's resume, shall we? Uh, our priority at this point is going to be to colonize the remaining couple planets in our territory. As with our other worlds, uh, we're just building them up and getting those pops. Uh, eventually, I'll use the Hive World Ascension perk uh, to simply terraform them into perfect worlds for our Hive. Now, from my experience, Hive Worlds is really good and I generally tend to go for that. Uh, as our third ascension perk, so as early as possible. And that is because it allows us to get more resource production going on in our planets. It says we can specialize certain planets into purely mining worlds or purely agriculture worlds, while at this point we're sometimes relegated to balancing between all of them due to a lack of planetary slots for those districts. And so getting high worlds is going to be a massive boost to our specialization efforts, and specialization is always good in this update, because you get more planetary bonuses applied to your production, and it's quite nice. To prepare to terraform all our worlds into hive worlds, and we're going to want to start increasing our energy credit production as well, because every one of those hive worlds cost 10,000 energy, and unless you have a good resource output that you can sell off or get just pure energy production, uh, it's quite hard to afford those right away. Alrighty, now we can get that adaptive ecology that I was talking about in the last episode. And now all our planets are going to get an additional building slot. Um, the only problem is, of course, that we can't actually afford anything. So I'm going to build up some mining districts and get those hive warrens on all these planets. Uh, it's going to help us out in reducing empire sprawl because instead of building up hive districts, which provide housing, uh, we can simply build up warrens, which provide housing just as well. And buildings do not increase Empire Sprawl in the slightest, and we'll be avoiding those penalties. Uh, because at this point, the penalties are going to start rising. We have pretty much ran out of techs, uh, which would allow us to increase our admin cap. Uh, normally, without a tech rush, we'll be getting them much later, but with a tech rush, this is uh, the strategy that we're going for. Ooh, gene tailoring. Nice. That's going to allow us to actually use up our tradition slot. Uh, well, ascension perk slot, and actually get our good old engineered evolution going uh, once the technology is researched of course Be one thing that is actually protecting us quite nicely is the fact that our only neighbors that can potentially attack are currently at war with another empire and so we don't have to worry about that AI does not like engaging in uh, two wars on two different fronts and that is just perfect for our cause. Alrighty, we have gained our gene tailoring tech, and now we can get our genetic ascension going. And now we can go ahead and modify our species. Uh, we're actually going to make two subspecies. We're going to create uh, the research spooter. That is going to be geared towards research production, as you may have guessed. And they're going to get the intelligent trait, as well as some extra engineering research. Uh, engineering is going to be quite important for securing the mega engineering technology later on. 
we're not going to be forcing this technology to spawn using the Master Builder's trait. And so getting more engineering production is going to be quite nice for us because it's going to mean that we have a higher chance of actually getting it in the near future. So let's create this template and then also create the template for the rest of our species. Now these pops are going to be agrarian. That is because food production is the highest among our empire at 430 points rather than uh, 300, which is the nearest with energy. And these guys are also going to be nomadic uh, because, well, immigration affects these boys. And getting more immigration growth from our spooters is going to be a priority. We're going to apply the research spooter over to our main planets, which is going to be Perthoria and Cytine. Uh, and we'll modify the species otherwise uh, with the rest of our colonies. Eventually, all our planets will probably have tech labs on them. However, those worlds will only have it as a secondary objective, and getting more research production is going to be their primary objective. Uh, of course, we can also potentially just start resettling pops to meet the Empire's needs. Uh, the pops with their extra research modifiers will automatically be prioritized for the brain drones jobs. Uh, however, this does require quite a bit of micromanagement, and uh, I'll only do that in the later game where it's actually worth it to spend all that energy that we don't currently have. Now we're also going to enable migration controls on our species, and that'll prevent the two subspecies from actually migrating between the worlds. This does not provide any migration as far as immigration and emigration is concerned. Uh, it works just in the same way whether the species is restricted or not, uh, but it prevents intermixing of species from different planets, and is quite nice. Uh, otherwise, the pops will simply take turns growing on the planet, and you'll get a 50-50 of the pops, uh, which is certainly not what we want. Ooh, finally, Star Fortresses. Now this can be vital to our Imperial Defense, and that is because once we get Star Fortresses up and running on both our borders, uh, it's going to mean that we're pretty much invincible to any sort of attack up until year 2300, at which point we're going to just upgrade them to Citadels and be fine regardless. Uh, this is very important and it's really going to allow us to just internally develop and just chill for a very long period of time. Alright, the gene modding of the research booter is complete, and now we can start the gene modding of the rest of our species to be the pleb booter. Let's do that. Also, now that we've gotten our biological section up and running, we can now start spamming clone vats all over our planets. Uh, these are basically just improved spawning pools that don't provide amenities or jobs. The lack of a job requirement means that we can simply just spam them on all our planets and not really worry about it too much, uh, with the exception of the two energy upkeep, uh, which is not going to be too significant in the end. Also, we have now managed to colonize all the planets within our borders. Uh, we've managed to get 14 planets within our small little chunk of territory. And uh, we've managed to obtain way more planets than we normally would have because the tomb worlds provided by the Ketlings. Uh, very nice of them to do so for the swarm. Uh, but even with six planets, this sort of strategy does work out. I have tested it before. And we'll probably end up doing this again on my own sometime uh, because this is quite fun actually. Uh, the research swarm is just so broken in this patch that, you know, it's insane. I would even venture out to say that this is the most broken build in 2.2, period. Also, we have now finally researched those star fortresses, and now we're going to be able to start building up these defenses. So let's buy up some alloys from our market. Uh, sell off some of these strategic resources. Strategic resources are very nice in terms of being able to sell them. And so we're going to be able to afford some of these alloys and build up our star fortress. So let's go ahead and do so. And in just three years, uh, we're going to be pretty much completely secure from any sort of drama going on in the galaxy. 
Oh no, we have migrating forests on one of our worlds. God damn. The surface of Skull Prime is covered in lush forests with massive tree analogs rising hundreds of meters into the air. Interestingly, our colonists have found that nearly all the flora is mobile to various degrees. Forests stretching for miles will slowly migrate to new areas richer in nutrients in a cycle that seems to be tied to the moon's orbit. Unfortunately, this has seriously hampered our efforts to develop the colony's infrastructure. The migrating trees frequently cut power lines while smashing our buildings and roads into rubble. We must have a solution for this problem. So we can either study them or burn them. Burning them will result in a stampede, and while studying them should give us a nice planetary modifier. Ordinarily, this would uh, result in a tile blocker uh, back in 2.1, and in fact, it could just stay a tile blocker, such as this migrating force over here, except give us some benefits. So let's do that and see what comes out of it. I have not had that event yet in 2.2, and I'm excited to see what's going on. And now the species modification for the Plebs Booters is complete, and our species lives in harmony and peace. Perfect. Our construction is complete. Also, we notice market gains in our food production. Very nice. Additionally, we're now also getting bonuses from immigration, and that is also very, very precious to us, because that means that more pop growth is going on, and more pop growth is always king. Alrighty, we have completed our project to study these migrating forests. Perfect. We have learned that the roaming forests on Skull Prime avoid certain regions that are home to colonies of a native pseudo-insect. These insects secrete a pheromone that can be used to steer the wandering forests away from the population centers. Furthermore, the areas where the forests most frequently range have been closed off as nature reserves. Our biologists can learn much by studying this reserve from the neighboring regions. Excellent. Let's see what this adds to the planet. Oh, very nice. Uh, this is not even a tile blocker. It simply provides us extra society research and more brain drone jobs. Nice. Alrighty, now our star base is upgraded to a star fortress. And we can put some more gun batteries on it, as well as a communications jammer to make sure the enemy cannot retreat as easily. Uh, at this point, we are pretty secure. Uh, the 6k flea power will increase to about 7 once we are done upgrading it, and is going to mean that any enemy fleet that comes at it will probably be destroyed very soon. Uh, at this point in the game, the AI will not have fleets sufficient enough to actually destroy the station, and so will retreat or not even attack. If the fleet power in your starbase is strong enough, uh, the AI will simply not attack that starbase, and so if we have a single choke protecting us with a massive starbase, uh, they simply will not come at us because we're too strong. Alright, we're getting a glimpse of the enemy fleet at this point. And while this is just one of the many battered fleets of the enemy, it's 1.6k fleet power, the enemy probably has multiple of those, and so that probably amounts to roughly 6k. However, the enemy does not like attacking with combined fleets because uh, whatever reason, and so our station will easily be able to take out any sort of attempt uh, by this empire to annihilate us. And with this new gun battery coming up very soon, uh, we'll be able to see how powerful the starbase will be. 7k. Perfect. No worries. We're pretty safe for now. And uh, eventually we're going to get citadels and that's going to just be the cherry on top. Uh, with citadels we're going to be able to get like 34k fleet power. And with 34k fleet power nothing will be able to stand uh, the assault of the starbase. At this point we're going to be pretty safe for the time being. And so the next couple decades will be quite relaxed, a calm before the storm, uh, before we start taking over all our neighbors and hopefully the whole galaxy. And so with that, thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like. 
and subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Discord and a Patreon, links are in the description, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.